One of the most iconic Australian reptiles and the largest lizard on the entire continent of Australia, the Parenti is the source of dreams for us monitor fans and has captivated millions of people worldwide due to its immense size, striking pattern, intelligence, and its overall demeanor and apex mentality. But just what makes the Parenti so special? And why has it been revered so highly in Aboriginal history for thousands of years? As it turns out, there's much more to the Parenti than you and I both think. So stick around to the end and you will not want to miss this video, as today we're going to be going over the most majestic lizard on the whole continent of Australia, a folk legend and the king of the outback. Before we begin, I just want to say that if you're not already subscribed, make sure you go down and smash that subscribe button as well as hit that bell notification so you don't miss any new videos. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. We are so close to a thousand subscribers and that's going to be a dream come true. It truly means the world. Make sure you guys like this video as well as comment down below and share with someone if you learned anything. Now let's go ahead and get into it. Described in 1845 by British zoologist John Edward Gray, the original Latin name for the Parenti was Hydrosaurus giganteus, meaning giant water lizard, but was later moved into the much more fitting genus of Varanus and is now known as Varanus giganteus. The Parenti has a very widespread range. It hails from the outbacks of central and western Australia, but can be found in the northern territory and in the south as well. There's also a decent population on Barrow Island that may actually grow a bit larger on average than mainland Parentes. More on that later. While the Parenti can be found up north, they are absent from the tropical areas. They prefer deserts, grasslands, and scrublands throughout Australia, where they can steal and dig their own burrows and have free range to explore and hunt. These burrows serve many purposes such as escape routes, thermoregulation, and more. The first thing that you will notice about the Parenti is its sheer size. The truth is, it is still fairly up in the air as to just how large these reptiles can grow. While there is a notion that these monitors can grow over 8 feet long, notching these in as one of the largest lizards on planet Earth, beaten out only in length by the Komodo dragon, crocodile monitor, and debatably the Asian water monitor, this 8 foot size is not as common as you may think. The longest Parenti ever recorded was just about 7 feet, and it seems as though some isolated populations of Parentis may grow larger than mainland populations. My guess is that these giant 8 foot reports are from word of mouth tales before anyone cared to capture, measure, and record the lengths of Varanus gigantis. They're more commonly found around the 5.5 to 6.5 foot mark for males, and a bit smaller for females, which is still enough to make them the largest lizard in all of Australia. But a fun fact is that they weren't always the big boys in the bush. The Komodo dragon actually is native to Australia, and when colonizers came, the Komodo dragon was killed off from mainland Australia and the surrounding islands, restricting them to only a few small Indonesian islands today. Back to the Parenti, other than their massive size, they sport all your typical monitor attributes. Extremely sharp teeth, used for slicing flesh, a long powerful tail that aids them in navigating terrain, venom glands, and strong muscular legs used for digging through the tough earth with five razor sharp claws on each foot. These animals have a beautiful pattern, being tan or dark brown, with a white underside and sporting a beautiful black reticulated pattern on the neck. And of course you cannot forget about the signature large yellow ocelli that have immortalized them both in the reptile world today and in aboriginal history. We'll jump more into that at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around. Their pattern gives them excellent camouflage against their prey and even those that they perceive as threats. The hunting and foraging tendencies of the Parenti differ from a lot of other Varanids in many ways. While many smaller monitor species live on a primarily insect or invertebrate diet, that is not the case for Varanus gigantis. Although they will not shy away from bugs, Parentes may take on mammal prey much more than any other monitor in Australia does. They have been known to hunt prey as large as wombats and young kangaroos, and will usually dismember and shake the prey items to disembowel them before ripping off pieces to swallow. The spread of rabbits throughout Australia is also thought to be the reason for the expansion of the Parenti range into areas that could not support them previously. Most of their prey is caught in open pursuit, as Parentes are incredible runners. Unlike other lizards who have to take breaks when running to breathe, Parentes and other monitors are able to run and breathe at the same time, allowing them to chase prey at faster speeds and for longer. 
they've been known to reach top speeds of up to 25 miles an hour, which is faster than most charging elephants. Prantis do not just eat mammal prey though. Like all monitors, they are extremely opportunistic and will take a variety of insects, reptiles, and birds, as well as scavenge for roadkill and other carrion. They're known to be cannibalistic and will eat weaker members of their own species, as well as skinks, agamas, and other small monitor lizards, including some of our favorites here in the hobby, black-headed monitors and spiny tail monitors. They've also been reported to eat sand monitors that are almost the same size as they are. Parentes are also known to routinely go onto sandy beaches and dig up sea turtle eggs for meals, and there's even reports of them hiding under cars to stalk seagulls. The lizard will wait for the bird to get close, grab it, and thrash it about before it can fly away. This is just a testament to the intelligence of this animal. Adult parentes have no natural predators due to their large size, but as young parentes are small, they can be vulnerable to birds, snakes, and any other large animals that prey on small baby lizards. Like many monitor lizards, Parentes are a common character that may be seen in Aboriginal artwork and heard of in Aboriginal folklore. They were respected by the native people of Australia, but they were also eaten, and their fats were used in things such as medicine. The following are two Aboriginal folklore stories about the Parenti. These are condensed for this video, but I would like to make a video dedicated to monitor lizards in folklore and mythology. If you'd like to see that video, make sure to comment so, and to subscribe so you don't miss it. Kintaku is a giant mythological parenti from this region of Aboriginal mythology and is one of the two ancestral reptile beings associated with Uluru. Song lines, aka dreaming tracks, are the paths in animist beliefs that these creator beings used and marked to pull together different geographic locations into the correct place. Ima Gintaka is the song line of Gintaku, where this giant parenti being with human characteristics created different land features spanning over 500 kilometers. The story goes that Gintaku set out from his home in Western Australia to the camp of another lizard tribe in search of a better grindstone. He stumbled upon the Nganu people and picked up their grindstone, stole it, and took it home while he was being chased by the tribe. And on the way home from his journey, he decides to dig up some bush onions and in doing so creates large boulders. On his way home, he created many landforms as he was being chased and vomited up different types of seeds and vegetables as he tried to escape. It's also believed that Mount Woodroof, South Australia's highest peak, is Gintaku looking over the country, scouting out the best path to return to his home in Western Australia. This next story can be found published in Australian Dreaming. This is the credit for the artwork on the screen. She paints the story of how the Parenti and the Goanna got their colors, which is the name of this story. And I'm going to go ahead and read that for you. Long ago, the Parenti and the Goanna agreed to decorate each other for a ceremony. The Parenti was a good artist who took great care with his work. So he painted the Goanna with great care and skill. He painted fine lines and dots over the Goanna's body, and when the paint had dried, he turned the Goanna over and using the thinnest of brushes with the greatest of care, painted extremely fine lines on his belly. Now it was the Goanna's turn to paint the Parenti. The Goanna, however, was lazy, and because it took so long for the Parenti to paint the Goanna, and the time for the ceremony was drawing near, the Goanna quickly painted the Parenti with crude splashes of yellow dots, which he applied with pieces of rolled up bark. When the Goanna was finished, the Parenti asked how he looked. The Goanna lied and said he looked beautiful. However, on the way to the ceremony, the Parenti walked past the water hole and saw his reflection in the water. The Parenti was angry about how he looked and he rushed to attack the Goanna, but the Goanna escaped by climbing to the top of a gum tree. The Parenti cursed the Goanna and said that from now on he must live in the branches of the trees and take shelter in the tree hollows, while he would use the rocks as his home and shelter. Today you can see the two keep to their own habitats, still wearing the designs on their bodies. The Goanna with a delicate lace-like pattern on his back, while the Parenti's dark brown skin is covered with large yellow dots and irregular lines. It's my guess that the Goanna in this story may be talking about the spotted tree monitor or Varanus scalaris or another tree-dwelling Australian Varanid. Stories like these are absolutely fascinating to me. These are more than just reptiles to those that coexisted with them. They were the source of major stories and joy. And it is no surprise seeing as how majestic the Parenti is. Today we learn that while the Parenti is the king of the outback and an apex predator, it's also very important in Aboriginal folklore and culture. 
Perhaps the most beautiful animal in all of Australia is also one of the most respected and held close to the hearts of people of the land. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I appreciate all the support lately. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding that bell notification so you never miss another upload. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, and share this video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.